Hey guys, it's MJ the Student Tech Tree and in this video I want to talk about a summary of a paper that I've just read called Efficient and Ethical Institutional Investing. And that's why I've got my glasses on because I've got some notes here because I don't want to leave anything out. So the paper was written back in the 90s by an actuary called Anthony Asher who's got a PhD, very intelligent guy. And what he talks about is quite interesting. So, I mean, we've always been taught that the goal of an investor is to maximize returns and minimize risk. You know, it's kind of like that's, that's our game, is to try, try and balance risk and returns. And Anthony starts off the paper by saying that we actually can't achieve this goal. And he refers to this concept known as bounded rationality. And bounded rationality basically says that we will never have enough information, we'll never have enough processing time, and we don't really have that high aspirations to make the perfect investment choice. Instead, what bounded rationality says is once we find something suitable or right, we stick with that and we don't actually push forward and try and figure out something better. So it's interesting that the very core of investing, he starts off by saying that you know, maybe that's something that we can't really achieve because of this bounded rationality concept. And I think the guy who came up with bounded rationality actually won a Nobel Prize back in the 70s. But what he does say is that actuaries or institutional investors or trustees, or people who manage large amounts of money, that they also have a, an ethical, um, you know, an ethical goal. They need to, to invest you know, responsibly. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. Interestingly enough, I mean, when you consider ethics, it's kind of, you know, what, what is ethics? It's a very philosophical topic, there's lots of different views. In the paper, Anthony takes quite a Christian approach to it, I mean, he quotes a few Bible verses, and he considers justice to be, you know, the number one virtue that ethics must protect or, or you know, consider. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a very quick summary. Um, by talking through the four areas that he, he mentions. If you want more information, I highly recommend reading the, the full paper to actually get the arguments behind it. But yeah, let's, let's, go, let's jump into it. So there's four areas. It's the capitalist area, the socialist area, the environment, and the morality area. So the capitalist area is, is quite interesting. What he says is that it's, it's unethical to make too much money. And if you're a capitalist, that comes at a little bit as a shock. But what he says is that it's wrong for businesses to make like that mon I need to think of the word here, monopoly, monopolistic. It's wrong to make a monolith monopoly profit. Sorry, I, I battle to say that word. Um, you can't make too much money. And this is, you know, from a capitalist point of view, you know, making more money is always seen as the better thing. And he makes the case that instead of making too much money, you should actually lower your price and pass on that benefit to your customer. So it's unethical to make too much money. And this can be seen if you have a monopoly or if your profits are, are too high. Um, I know there are some Christian theologians back in the day who kind of had the same thing. I think it was Thomas Aquarius. Aquarius? Sorry, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce these, these fancy, fancy surnames or big words. Sorry about that. Um, other things that he talks about in the capitalist section is that managers and CEOs should not get too high of a remuneration. Um, you know, their salary shouldn't be way above the average. Um, CEOs shouldn't get these massive bonuses. Um, instead, that money should rather have been passed on to the consumer with lower prices and such like that. He also talks about how, as institutional investors, um, if the company is considering a takeover, the investor needs to be actively involved and say, well, is this actually the best thing to do for you know, the economy and for the business? Or is the CEO just doing this out of his own personal desire to extend his career? Because I mean, what better way to get a promotion as a CEO than to gobble up your competitors and be you know, the boss of an even bigger empire? Um, finally, he also says that institutional investors should vote for higher dividends. Um, this just increases their liquidity position and if not, uh, companies that retain their, their earnings might be tempted to chase you know, uneconomical takeovers, might push for higher uh, remunerations or spend it on uneconomical projects. Um, moving on to the socialist area, he says that institutional investors, because remember, they, they have the power, because they're buying such a big chunk of the shares or they, you know, they're quite a, a big shareholder, 
they have the ability to appoint managers and change CEOs and you know vote on big decisions. And he says that they should value or sorry, they should evaluate management by not necessarily like how much profit they made or all these other things, but rather by some more softer measures, such as what is their staff retention. You know, if there's a high staff turnover, maybe working conditions aren't that good, and that you know this management needs to be you know addressed. Um, so staff training is good, so the more staff training the better. Um, companies need to combat unemployment, so this is from a socialistic point of view. We need to create jobs, um, this can be better for the business, can be better for the economy, and managers should, should be evaluated on how many jobs that they are creating. Um, the environmental area, this one's a little bit more straightforward. Um, the idea that it's, it's bad to invest in businesses that you know, are polluting the world, have got a big carbon footprint, and are you know, just stuffing up the environment. Where this gets interesting is, say, particularly in South Africa, with regards to our, you know, we've got a big mining sector, um, agriculture, there's, you know, you know, the amount of water, you know, certain cow farms use, and, and mining is you know, destructive on the, you know, on the environment and stuff like that. And he says how we need to consider future generations. So we need to be, we need to be wise, we need to not, you know, abuse our resources, but rather manage them in a in a better way so that's that's definitely an interesting area you know around the the environment and then finally he talks about this this moral area um, he says you know it could be seen as unethical to invest in companies whose products harm society um, such as tobacco where again in south africa we have a company called british american tobacco who's quite a big player on our top 40 share index so by not investing in that company, you know, it's kind of hard to, to track the index and stuff like that. So this is where it does get, get fairly interesting. But, you know, is it morally uh, wrong or unethical to invest in tobacco shares? Um, what about alcohol shares? Because uh, remember, with South Africa, we've also got SA Breweries, which has just been taken over by, you know, that other big brewery. So, you know, it's, it's very interesting because what he's talking about, there's a lot of application, you know, when you become an institutional investor. You know these decisions that you need to make but he does say that how morality is one of those things where some people do have different concerns about uh, morality and some people might not see tobacco as being bad others might see it as being very bad so there needs to be some sort of balance um, I actually emailed him because the paper was written back in back in the 90s and I said to him I said you know what what about technology shares technology shares particularly ones around artificial intelligence and machine learning that have their goal is to retrench you know massive amounts of administrative staff and are going to cause you know waves of unemployment so I said you know is it morally wrong to invest in these companies and from the email that I got back from him it appears as if he's saying no um, that you know Technology processes are not necessarily unethical. It's kind of this whole creative destruction process, which kind of happened with the industrial revolution. I mean, you could have said the same thing, like all these machines are going to be replacing all these jobs, but they actually pushed the economy into like a golden age, and you know everybody was able to benefit. New jobs were created, and you know it was better for for everyone. So it might be a little bit of pain in the beginning. But the long-term goal is is better. So he doesn't see technology as being an unethical share. And um, but yeah, that was that was essentially the paper. Like I said, he wrote 50 pages on it. He gave uh, you know proper reasoning for each of these points. So I highly recommend you guys go and read the paper. I'll put the link in the description below. I'll also put a link to um, another paper that was written in 2015 by the actuarial staff at Wits University. They spoke about the six-step process around ethical decision making. Um, I haven't read through that fully, I just, you know, was breezing through it. So I'll put that link in the description below and you can also check that out because, yeah, I think ethics, it's, it's an interesting, interesting side to actuarial science. You know, we, we're so used to dealing with statistics and maths where the answer is right or wrong. Um, you know, ethics, there are two sides to, to every story. And it definitely is an interesting area where actuaries can flex their judgment and, you know, their, their discernment and see what is actually the best, best way forward. But anyway, I think that's all I, I want to talk to you on this video. I don't want it to go on for too long. I see it's really approaching 10 minutes. So, so let me say goodbye. But leave me your, your thoughts and your questions in the comment section below. And yeah, let's chat about ethics and the role it plays in investing. Cheers, guys.